I'm a massive fan of the Sniper Elite series from Rebellion, and Glenn absolutely loves the Zombie Army trilogy games, but all of them performed brilliantly on the Nintendo Switch, so I had high hopes for Zombie Army 4 Dead War. A thanks to Rebellion for the review copy. My name's Mark Walker, welcome back to Switch Up. Remember, if you buy any games, save 10% using code SWITCHUP at switchup.gg. And if you don't, then you're very wise. You've probably got thousands of games in your backlog anyway. Is picking it up a no-brainer, or is this one dead on arrival? Well, let's find out. Narratively speaking, this is less 2004's Shaun of the Dead and more 1985's Reanimator. Except these aren't medical students raising the dead, they were uh, Nazis. With Hitler gone and the war over, the world thought they could move on. However, his experiments to reanimate the dead and create a zombie army aren't quite as easy to quash. The zombie infection spreads from city to city, and I'm sure you already guessed it, that's where you come in. It's an entirely ludicrous story that serves as a sometimes somewhat rickety framework Work upon which you and up to three other friends can stand and blast zombie brains. Gameplay is similar to previous games, but it sees some iterations. You control your characters from a third-person perspective. Before you even begin, you'll be customising your character, choosing their voice, loadout, and any other unlocked gear and trinkets. This time around, weapons have more of a permanency. There's an RPG-esque skill tree for each one. Whereas in previous games, you might flip from weapon to weapon with no real purpose of sticking with one, it's through using your weapons in combat that you'll unlock the slots to allow you to use your upgrades and the upgrade packs are scattered around stages hidden in large chests. And if you're someone that enjoys trying to find all the secret areas, then my rule of thumb should be followed. Wherever the indicator's pointing, go in the other direction. The general formula for the games hasn't changed a great deal. Move forward, fight a huge group of zombies, survive by the skin of your teeth, desperately struggle to replenish your ammunition, and then move forward again. While that might sound mundane, it's actually incredibly enjoyable, and even more so if done with a friend. This is partially due to the excellent performance of Rebellion's engine, but also a solid control set. Pulling the left trigger will allow you to aim one of your weapons. You'll have two primaries and a secondary. The secondary, usually a pistol, has its own special ability. If you can clock up 10 headshots, you can perform a Red Dead Redemption style lock on and execute. But with the two primary weapons, you'll get the classic slowdown of holding your breath. And not only does that give you a few precious moments to line up those headshots, it will also calculate the drop of the bullet for you, making it significantly easier to take multiple enemies out. The X-ray camera makes a return here, while perhaps less frequently than the trilogy, which in my opinion is probably a good thing. Levels are divided up with safe rooms, familiar if you've played the previous games, and equally so if you're a Left 4 Dead player. These allow you and your team a few precious moments of respite, a chance to grab a med kit, replenish your ammunition, and also, in a change for the series, a workbench to customise those weapons and even change your character loadout. While it's not overly intrusive, I did notice a few little DLC purchases in the way of costumes and certain weapons loitering down at the bottom of these selection screens. The campaign features a number of boss fights. These are exciting affairs and tend to drop heavy weapons which can be used for a finite period of time but which are incredibly powerful. There are also mounted turrets and a variety of other weapons which can be picked up off the ground. In keeping with its over-the-top nature, you can perform an insta-kill melee attack to keep the zombie hordes away as a last-ditch move, and this has a cooldown attached to it. You can also sprint in any direction by clicking in the stick, and then by using your melee you can actually barge through crowds of zombies, something that becomes essential, but they'll more than likely take a little nip out of you. Adding to the RPG elements of the weapon customization, there are also character modifications. By default, this allows you to kill a single zombie to revive yourself once in a round. But there are others that increase stamina, make you much more powerful, and it's nice playing around with these once unlocked, as it adds a touch of depth and customization when playing in a large group. The token dance moves have been added in for the online play, but I can't attest to how good they are, because last time I looked in the mirror, I was not a 10-year-old Fortnite player. At least, that's my official line. Secretly you know what I've been doing. As well as the campaign mode, there's also a horde mode here. As with everything in the game, it can be played solo or with a friend. And here, Glenn and I teamed up to test out how the online works, because it's a large part of this franchise. I'm pleased to say that on the Nintendo Switch, it's incredibly seamless. I wasn't able to test if there was voice chat, but the general premise of the horde mode remains fairly straightforward, defeating all of the zombies until you're left with only a few, which is indicated on the screen with a certain number of skulls. Once defeated, a new area may unlock, 
back, allowing you to progress further into the stage. And in all the different modes in the game, you'll find a variety of different zombies, from the traditional shufflers to those that wear helmets, carry guns, fire acid, brandish chainsaws, and obviously vampire bats. I mean, why wouldn't there be? The experience is bombastic and over the top, and it works well. I think where some people may find issue with it is in its sheer lack of depth. It doesn't try anything new. You might find yourself collecting some fuel tanks, flicking a few switches, or holding off the hordes of enemies that clearly want to go and destroy the control board because zombies care a lot about metal cogs. I guess what I'm saying is it's a very safe fourth entry. It does exactly what it says on the tin. As a solo experience, it's fun, but probably a little too repetitive, but that changes drastically when you introduce a few friends. On balance, I'd score it 15 out of 20 for gameplay. However, if you have a group of four of you, you could probably add a couple of points to that. The controls, however, are excellent. They score 18 out of 20. Only let down by a little input latency when playing online, but that's more a result of not having dedicated servers. Visually, things are looking good. There's a wider variety of different enemy types. The animations are all good, but chiefly performance in both docked and handheld is absolutely spot on. Rebellion have really got to grips with using this engine on the Switch, and you can expect 30 frames per second with nary a drop no matter what's going on on screen. The same applies to handheld mode, where text size is legible, and shrinking the image down to the small Switch OLED, it really does look crisp. Now, I believe the game is running in native resolution in docked and handheld. There could be some dynamic resolution scaling as we've seen in previous games, but the color palette here is more forgiving as it's a darker experience, but anti-aliasing seems okay, texture quality is decent, and there's some real-time lighting and screen space reflections, so it's by no means an ugly game. Well, not graphically speaking. Audio fidelity seems very high, and the music combines some of the old synth-style twangs with more of a B-movie feel. And it's suitably dynamic in moments of intense action. The voice actors are... Mon ami, you are a true hero! Well, and it fits perfectly. While I'm unsure if it uses full surround sound, spatial sounds and placements of individual enemies is achievable if you have a surround sound system. Visuals and performance are decent, although I did notice some asset recycling and contrasting a few less inspired areas, there were some great locations, particularly in some of the latter stages. Visuals and performance score 17 out of 20, and audio also scores 17 out of 20. The game's gonna set you back £39.99 or your regional equivalent. There is a physical which can already be had for about 20% less than that. This package includes all the Season Pass 1 content for free, so that would be 3 additional levels, 4 character packs, 9 weapon bundles, 5 weapon skin packs, and 4 character outfit bundles. Whether hearing that gets you all excited, I don't know, but back in the day we just called that the full game. It's a fun experience that will take you around about 15 to 20 hours, and there's the potential for far more than that if you have a group of friends. The inclusion of the Horde mode is a very welcome one, one, and performance, once again from Rebellion, is almost flawless. Once again, it's a case of whether or not you want to play it on the Nintendo Switch in handheld mode. If you don't, there are other options available which are far cheaper. £40 is still quite a premium price. I think a third less than that would have been the sweet spot. I give value 14 out of 20. Zombie killing doesn't get much better than this, especially on the Nintendo Switch. Disengage brain, enable motion controls, and you're on your way. But I did appreciate the inclusion of more RPG-esque mechanics. It gets an overall Switch Up score of 81%. Thanks to all of you that enjoyed the channel. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. I had a bit of a laugh making it, and it was quality teaming up with Glenn to do some of that co-op footage. I think without that, it's almost impossible to review these games. I know I certainly struggled with the trilogy when I had no one to play with online, so yeah. Cheers to Glenn for the game. Let me know in the comments what you're thinking of this one. Are you a fan of the series? And you've got to give uh, credit to Rebellion. They really do know how to use their engine on Switch. Thanks to our patrons who support us each and every month and to all of you that enjoy the content. And as always, for all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya!